as a war gamer, you want to push out some recommendations. You want to share your hobby. You want to share that enthusiasm. You want to create something on the table, a memorable experience with friends. So when I'm asked from the perspective of someone that is looking to start getting involved in wargaming, they don't have a particular system in mind, but rather overall wargaming, a couple of suggestions to check out, or on the opposite end, someone that is is die-hard, complete buy-in to a specific system, maybe like 40K, but you're looking for something else, whether that's to take a little bit of a break every now and then or just explore some different tactics. From that cross-section perspective, Wings of Glory is what I always recommend. And from a wargaming system, it's one that I play. I would consider it one of my primary wargaming systems because it just works on so many levels. The primary thing is approachability. So Warhammer 40,000, Battletech, sci-fi in the future, amazing systems on there. But a lot of it depends on um, your perspective with that. Do the miniatures appeal to you? Do Space Marines appeal to you? Do giant 80s robots appeal to you? Um, Maybe you go into historical miniatures, but does that time period appeal to you? You know, if we're talking ancients, Romans, are we talking Napoleonics? Are we talking World War I, World War II? And then, of course, other systems out there that, that explore um, both sci-fi and modern. The system itself, the visuals, the time period, the narrative has to work and has to be approachable. Wings of Glory, okay, it's World War I, but it's World War I airplanes on there. It works and it's approachable. Everyone can immediately understand it, even if you don't know the detailed history of World War I. Um, through the movies, through media, through culture, through books, you know about dogfighting and you know about flying around on there. So from that cross-perspective of all potential players, someone can immediately sit down and understand the game. Now, on the opposite side for a moment, and there are some parallels... One of the reasons in my mind uh, why I believe X-Wing Miniatures is so successful, yet it's not one that I would always recommend in this perspective, is um, much like Wings of Glory, X-Wing, I don't want to say everybody, but most people know Star Wars, and it's approachable, and flying around spaceships and dogfighting and doing this, it's understandable, it's approachable, it's an easy buy-in. But X-Wing Miniatures is a collectible game. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of cards. There's a lot of competition. Um, I would call it a collectible system. It is a war game, but it's not necessarily a traditional type war game. Wings of Glory is approachable. So that's, that's the first reason where it's like you don't really know what gaming system you want to buy into. Um, as you explore your options, look at Wings of Glory. Now, they also come in Wings of Glory World War II. Um, I think World War I is a little bit more approachable. The miniature line um, is a lot bigger, and I think it stands out a little bit better. But this does somewhat equally apply to World War I and World War II. The miniatures come pre-painted to a very, very excellent, excellent standard on there. Now, admittedly, wargaming is, is really three parts. Traditional wargaming is three parts. Painting miniatures, creating scenery, that hobby perspective. Actually playing the game and the rules and the narrative, and then three is is tactics. But painting as a hobby not only requires an investment, and in my opinion, it's very enjoyable, it pays off, but you can't just jump into traditional wargaming systems without paying the paint tax. You got to paint your stuff, you got to build your terrain, you got to take care of everything on there. That makes entering into the system unless you're part of an existing club or have an existing player base, a little bit challenging. Wings of Glory, you buy the plane, you pop it out, you put it on the flight stand, you're ready to go. So if you're approaching this as someone new to the hobby, anyone can sit down and play it and approach it from the narrative, from the visuals. It's pre-painted, so it looks fabulous on the table. And you can play just on a regular table or a kind of a mat, sky mat, or they sell kind of the pre-printed, uh, it's the mouse pad type material, so it slides really nice, the plane's on there, and it looks like the, um, the French countryside. 
out there. So very, very easy to buy in on there. Doubly so because terrain, well, it's in the sky. It's not even space where we've got asteroids and space junk and things like that. It, it, it just works. You've got your planes. Now, I have seen some setups that might have some zeppelins and might have some clouds. You can get into the hobby aspect on your own as time evolves. You'll see some people repainting the planes. You'll see some people adding a swivel so it can bank and turn the planes for the visuals on how you're moving. But out of the box, ready to play. The rules are where Wings of Glory really, really shine and are really, really approachable, uh, especially for the casual war gamer on there. Because the way it's set out is you have your plane and you have a deck of cards that you, you pick the movement of your plane. and You have to program it three cards in advance. So you look, where do you want your plane to go? What do you want it to do? You put these cards down on a control panel. And once everyone's ready, all at the same time, you all flip your card, you all move your plane. This, for me, is what makes this game very scalable and very unique. Games like Warhammer 40K that are you go, I go. I sit there, you move, you shoot. Um, maybe I have a reactionary move. But, but essentially, a lot of time I'm spent doing nothing. If we amplify that over multiple players, things really bog down. Think about some board games. You know, I, I love Runebound 2nd Edition. I love 3rd Edition too. Runebound 2nd Edition is probably one of my favorite RPG-type board games. But the turns, um, if you're playing with four or five players, you're sitting there waiting for your turn. It's, it's, it's kind of a drag. It kind of slows things down. Certain war games are like that if you play in a big group. But the fact that Wings of Glory is set up that everyone goes at the same time, what this means is if you and I are playing one player to one player head to head, our games go so fast, we're both engaged at the same time, we can get four, five, six games in. And that's great because this way if I lose a couple of games, I get a chance to at least redeem myself so I don't have to hear about it all week, right? as opposed to some other war games where you play for four or five or six hours, it's a great game, but you lose. Then you get, like, texts with pictures at 11 o'clock at night and, and all sorts of crazy stuff from your friends, and you got to wait till next week to get that revenge. Playing a quick, fast, involved, efficient game mitigates that potential a little bit on there. But now imagine if we stack five, six, uh, the most I've ever had, because I have an obscene amount of planes, was 12 players on each side. That, though, that is 12 players all being engaged, all playing, all shooting, all working together as a team, real time. I don't know of many other war games that can do that. There's also an interest of what if. So when you take damage, so after everybody moves, you have a range stick, and you kind of touch the planes to see if they're in range in the firing arc and if they are based on the guns the type of machine guns one machine gun two machine guns heavy machine guns uh, you draw cards from a damage deck you don't show your opponent you don't show the other players these cards and these cards can range from zero damage to one damage two damage three damage engine hit pilot hit um, all sorts of damage conditions and when your plane takes a select amount of damage you know based on the stats of the plane it's destroyed. And this is really unique because you can shoot me with your machine guns. I draw a card. It's a zero. You don't know how much damage I've taken. I mean, think about that from the narrative. You're a pilot. You're up there. You're, you're literally, you have your machine guns. They're iron sights. You're shooting at me with iron sights. And you see the, the bullets going through my airframe. How much damage did you really do? Now, if I'm smoking or I'm on fire or I pass out, you know, okay, obvious. But when it goes through the airframe, how much damage did you really do? That's what this card reflects on there. How accurate were your hits? It's, it's a really kind of unique guessing game. Plays very fast, very fluid. Now, the rules also allow you to start stacking up. And, and this is what the game does perfect um, from that perspective also. Scalability. You can play the core rules, and it plays very fast. It's very tactical, very fluid, a lot of fun. Then you can start adding stuff in, and it, it bolts on and off. So you can add ground forces, where now there's anti-aircraft guns shooting up. 
you can add aspects for ground attack, dropping bombs and things like that on these ground targets. You can add in altitude. You can add in sub-damage, really special type of damage effects. So if it's part of a new wargaming group, it picks it up really easy. I mean, literally after first turn, you understand this game. It's, it's that easy. If you're all hardcore war gamers, strategy gamers, you can just jump right in to all of the rules, bolt them all on, and now you have multi-dimensional aspects of the game. That's very, very potent. All for a minimal buy-in, all for pre-painted, all for ready to go on there. And, and that's why, out of all the gaming systems that I enjoy, and I'm very passionate about Battletech, Warhammer 40K, Chain of Command, and I, I regularly recommend them to my friends, and I, and I encourage, you know, hey, you want to set up a game? We'll play it, we'll do it, we'll make it happen. Um, but for that, that spectator or that potential player that wants to jump into wargaming but doesn't know what or doesn't want to jump into something that's going to be obsolete, Wings of Glory is always the number one on my recommendation list.